Welcome to MH2801 video segment on the 1, 2, 3 of contour integration. In this course, we are learning to use contour integration as a means of evaluating real integrals. So in some time, it's in some exam in some cases we have we are given the contour, whereas in other cases we have to design the contour for performing the integration. So the first thing we need to do when encounter when we encounter a real integration problem is to decide whether we can convert it into a contour integral. Now there are two kinds, two main kinds of contour integral. Um, so the first thing to do we to do decide on the type of contour integral. Okay, and here we are guided by the fact that if it is an average, let's say if it is one over t, an integral from zero to t of some f of t, which is periodic dt, uh, we convert it into a closed contour integral c f of z, well this can be a different function, f prime z dz, whereas if we, are, if we encounter a function where we have to integrate from minus infinity to infinity, or let's say f of x dx, then we will convert it into Again, again, a closed contour integral of f of z dz. Uh, in this case, the function f of z is just the same function as the function f of x, with x replaced by z. And here, it may be different. In fact, it's usually different. And here, the closed contour, the closed contour here is always just a unit circle. So c is the unit circle, whereas here, for the integral over from plus infinity to minus infinity, the closed contour is very frequently, so if this is the real part of z, and this is the imaginary part of z, then the closed contour, let's change the color, the blue is frequently a semicircle that goes from minus infinity to plus infinity and back. So the sense of the contour will be like so. Uh, and oh, in, in fact, even for the other one, it's the same direction as well. And we just have to decide, first thing we need to do will be to decide uh, which type of contour integral we must develop. Thereafter, we need to, so step number two, step number two, is to determine the poles of f of z, the integrand function. Uh, though usually what we do is after we have finished deciding, determining the poles of f of z, we would sketch it out on the argon diagram. So this is the real part of z and this is the imaginary part of z. And uh, we will sketch it out, say something like this, okay. And this must then be in relation to the closed contour C. So sometimes the uh, sometimes the the pole of the function can lie outside, like this. So it can be like this. So it can be outside, it can be inside, and sometimes it can even be on the. Sometimes it can even lie on the close contour itself and we will learn how to deal with that uh, in a later video segment. So the but the second order of business is to determine the poles of f of z. Now what about the last thing that we need to do? The third thing would be to apply the residue theorem. Which states that the closed contour integral of f of z dz is equal to 2 pi i times a sum. Okay, let's call this uh, not i but k over 
the residues. Residues uh, and the residues are actually so the residues are in fact a minus one uh, k. So that means if we have if we have a total of uh, three if we have a total of so if three poles at z1 z2 and z3 then we need to evaluate the residues a minus 1 z1 a minus 1 z2 and a minus 1 z3 and of course a minus 1 stands for the uh, the coefficient of the uh, term in the Lorentz series where uh, z minus z1 appear as uh, z minus z1 to the minus 1 power okay so actually if you apply these three steps you should be able to arrive at the final answer so in the next video segments uh, I will show examples of how these three steps can be applied to different kinds of contour integrals